In this video, we're going to be using Lothar Grooming Juice and the Mighty Weck. Stay tuned. Hey there folks and welcome back for another video. I'm your host CDB and thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And as mentioned before, today we're going to be using Lothar Grooming Juice, which has a fantastic scent. I really like it. We have it whipped up in the Captain's Choice bowl here, a nice hydrated uh, lather. Beautiful scent. Now a viewer, David, um, tells me that this smells like um, Sterling Piacenza or Razor Rock Triple X or Aqua De Parma Colonia. It does not to my nose. And I'll just say this, I have been a big fan of uh, Aqua De Parma Colonia for 10 years. It was probably the first artisanal scent that wowed me when I first smelled it uh, via Razor Rock Triple X. And if you look at the notes, um, juice, and I'll put the notes for you on the screen right there, and Aqua de Parma Colonia are not the same. I think what they have in common is they have a citrus sort of forward scent in common, but that's to me uh, where the uh, common part of it sort of ends. They do not smell, <laughs> smell the same. And believe me, I probably bought almost every uh, Aqua de Parma Colonia scented soap that's in existence because I love that scent. They're both really pleasant scents, but this one is definitely different. Um, the cost on it, now I got it on sale at the Razor Company. It was $19.99 for four ounces or $4.99 an ounce, which is a fair price on our chart. Normally at the Razor Company, it's $24.68 or $6.17 an ounce, which is painful. And I know that's a complaint some of the folks in the UK have uh, aired as well, that they're a little bit put off by the price. It is a good quality soap. And in my opinion, it's the best artisanal soap that I've tried out of the UK. I think it's a fantastic quality. It's easy to lather. Um, it's a little soft, but still easy to lather. Really good quality. I'll show you the ingredients. It is a tallow-based soap. And again, the consistency on this is uh, soft. Definitely good quality soap I've enjoyed using. I think this might be my fourth one. I've enjoyed them all scent-wise as well. Scent strength on this one is right at the entry level of medium, I would call it. And I do like the scent, although it, <laughs> it is not like Aqua de Parma Colony. Um, it might be reminiscent in the citrus, but again, that's, I think, where, where it ends in terms of being like it. The razor for today is the Mighty Mighty Weck, and you've seen this on the channel many times. It is a terrific shaver, and we shall get right into it. We're going to miss the face here, and we'll get the lathering. Brush AP Shave Co. Uh, with the cashmere knot, and we will get right into it. Uh, David is a nice guy. He, uh, he and I often disagree, but it's always in an agreeable fashion. And, and that's the way you should handle, you know, when you have a difference of opinion, be agreeable. And we often disagree, <laughs> but it's always pleasant. You know, it's a, it's a nice um, exchange of ideas. And uh, I always look forward to David's comments. So David, thank you. But obviously I'm going to have to disagree with you on this one. And I think if you look at the notes of Aqua de Parma Colonia in this one, they're certainly not the same. And so I'm going to have to disagree again on this one. Now, I know uh, last week, I believe, a lot of the guys were doing a uh, sort of a UK appreciation, you know, using UK products. And uh, uh, I saw several of those videos from, you know, Jim Will Shave and John Shaves 101 and and others. And I said, uh, also Mr. G, uh, Mr. G Shaves. And I said, I thought this one is the best one that I've personally tried. Um out of all the UK products. And John Shaves 101 made an interesting point as well that um, that some of the UK artisans aren't quite as involved with the community. His words, not mine. But I think, you know, I don't think he's wrong on that. Uh, I noticed, you know, in a, in a lot of the artisans or out of a lot of those artisans, they don't, they don't appear to be as involved in the community. Some of them sell to the community, but you don't hear much from them. And John said in particular, he had reached out to several and never got a response of any kind. And, you know, that to me, um, I, I prefer the artisans who are involved in the community and are responsive. That's just my preference. But one thing is for sure, the uh, UK artisans make great products. But I think John is probably right in that uh, many of them, um, they're not quite as involved in the community. I think um, Mr. G said that in his video as well, that maybe they're not uh, sort of as in your face as some of the maybe North American artisans. Um, and I don't think you need to be, you know, in the face 
of the people who use your product, but I do appreciate it when it's, when an artisan comes by and you, you post a video or a shave of the day and, and they say, thank you for using my product or they're appreciative that you showcase their product. I think that's nice. You know, it's, I think that's nice of anybody you do business with when they show their appreciation just by thanking you and so, um, to me, that's as much involvement is as, um, required. You, you don't have to be trying to sell your product all the time, but I think some involvement in the community definitely goes a long way with people, which is why you see, um, a lot of the artisans who are at least somewhat active, they tend to be very successful. And you tend to see more of those products in Shave of the Days and videos and so on. Um, you know, it's 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 just part of the thing. Being part of the community versus selling, just selling to the community, um, I think is really what it comes down to. And I will say, Lothar, Johnny, I believe is the gent's name. Um, he's always commented on the... Um, like if I post something on Instagram and he sent me messages and so on, showing appreciation. So that level, I think, is just fine. You don't really have to do much more than that. Just let know, let people know you appreciate it. Because it is a very small um, niche or niche hobby. And so, you know, people <laughs> talk to one another and showing that appreciation, I think, goes a long way with people. And I think that's what uh, John Shaves was was really getting at. And if you don't respond when people contact you, that's kind of a, I don't think you'll get much traction ultimately, or you won't get the kind of traction that other people do. If I reach out to you and you're unresponsive, I'm probably not going to use much of your product because, you know, if you can't answer a question, at least, um, you know, honestly, there's too much competition to be unresponsive. Um, there's so many artisans that make good product that you don't have to there's no need for you to use one that, you know, isn't responsive, in my opinion. And I won't. But that's just me. Now, I do use products where the the artisans are not very involved in the community. I still use their product, but I, I tend to use more of the folks who are. Because you kind of have a connection with them. You know, you, you talk from time to time and just exchange pleasantries. And it makes you feel good to support people who you think are good people as well. So that's kind of the way I see it. The first pass, by the way, was excellent. The Lothar is good stuff. I wish you could see the sheen on the lather, but you probably cannot. This is a good quality soap, there's no question. But I certainly agree. And I know the, the folks in the UK have said, you know, it's just pricey. And it is, especially for them. I think they were telling me in, in some cases it was more pricey than it is for us. And, you know, so that that's something that I think um, could certainly be better for, for the folks in the UK. Um, I certainly understand that because believe me, I don't want to pay any more than I have to for anything, but I certainly do like the quality of this soap. I like the scent of this soap and you know, it's plenty slick enough. I know, uh, David had also said that he didn't find the residual slickness on Lothar to be, uh, very good. I do not find that to be the case at all for me and I am someone and again I don't say this in a braggadocious sort of fashion but I am someone who's used in the neighborhood of 1,000 soaps over the years and I'm in the process of documenting that on a spreadsheet and this soap is in terms of slickness in every way is, is, is as good as anything else I've tried personally. Again a lot of that depends on the way you use products. How you lather them you know, and I'm not saying someone else is wrong if they don't get the same result I get, but it depends on the way we lather it, how much water we use. And you can hear that feedback, boy. It's like, uh, it reminds me of when you're buttering toast that's maybe a little more done. It's, it's a, I find that to be a pleasant sound. That's one, one of the reasons I love using the WIC. It's fantastic in that regard. And I know Dave Card, when he uses the WIC, it's just like a smooth sequence of whoosh, you know. He doesn't do a lot of uh, uh, buffing or choppy strokes, and I tend to be more of a, a choppy stroke shaver. That's just the way I shave. But he's right in that, 
with the WEC, it's the blades, especially the Kismet, are good enough that you can just make long strokes and that should work for most people. But if you're in the habit of uh, doing smaller strokes, you know, you have to shave however you shave. And um, once you develop habits, they're hard to break. But he's right that um, you can make long strokes with the WEC. And by the way, plenty of good slickness residual here on this soap because there's not much soap left. And I assure you, it is still slick. It's still quite slick. So again, we'll disagree with David, but we do it in an agreeable fashion because I look forward to David's comments. He, he provides a lot of good insight. And for me, it's certainly not imperative that people agree with me. Everybody has their own take on things and has their own right, you know, to give opinions. And to me, a difference of opinion is not a reason not to like someone. You know what I mean? And so I don't, when someone disagrees with me, I'm just like, hey, that's your experience. My experience is mine and your experience is the right experience. So for me, this is a phenomenal soap for, for, for David. Um, you know, he doesn't think it's quite as good as maybe other people do and that's okay. For him, that is correct. For me, it's a it's a different uh, thing entirely. So, very nice boy. The Wex one of the best shavers I own. In fact, in terms of uh, open blade shaver, it's the best that I own. And again, that's my opinion. People would disagree. Some people don't like shavettes at all. That's okay. But the way this thing shaves, it's like uh, I don't know. It's just like erasing whiskers. It just, if you have a good blade, it's just such a phenomenal razor to use. And it's fun to use too. What I always caution people about when buying Wex is the hair shaper versions. This is a hair shaper version, but some of them are very small and it's hard to see. And pretty much the only place to get these are on eBay or Etsy or secondhand market. And the, the hair shaper ones, some of them are very small. This one is close to a standard size, which is good, but some of the other ones are small. And if you get a small one, I think it's a little more difficult to use. Um, and it's hard to tell when you're getting a small one. So if you want to be entirely safe, if you get the sexto blade version of the WEC, you're getting full size. Now this hair shaper version happens to be pretty close to full size as well, but other ones are, are quite a bit smaller. So please keep that in mind. And I'm telling you what, that was a magnificent shave with the low through and the wet. It's just a great combo. Let me rinse, then we'll come back and get into the post. Stay tuned. And all right, we are back and off cam. We did a warm water rinse to remove the soap. And then we applied our Razor Rock Travel Alum. I just had a little bit of stinging right there, so I got a little close, but still, no nicks, cuts, creepers, weepers, irritation, bubbles, troubles. Really nice shave. The wet is a tremendous shaver. After the alum, by the way, I rinsed off, toweled off with our Lancaster towel, and then applied the Magic made by Witches Thayer's Witch Hazel. Now back to the WEC. Um, magnificent shaver, the WEC. Uh, again, the Sexto blade will always be the full size, full size version. Sometimes the hair shaper is, sometimes it's not. So be careful there. But in terms of uh, shaving with an instrument that is uber, uber sharp and can get very close, it's hard to beat the WEC. It is absolutely fantastic. The Lothar grooming, Juice today was fantastic as well. Very good quality. So if you lather the soap in a way that gets the most out of it, it is going to compare favorably to almost any soap on the market. I know early on, a lot of people were giving it a lot of praise and I too was skeptical. And then I tried it and I'm like, those guys are right. You know, sometimes when there's hype, it's correct. And in my opinion, Lothar is the best product that I have tried out of the UK in terms of a shaving soap. Very good, and I believe he's working on uh, splashes as well, so that should be interesting. He's got some really nice scents too. It's pricey. That's really the only complaint that I could air. It's definitely a pricey soap, but I have enjoyed using it. Yet another hit from Lothar for me, so I definitely like the Lothar soaps, and I do like that he's involved in the community, like we mentioned earlier. I think that's a plus, so thumbs up for me on that. Uh, we used our uh, AP Shave Co. Handcrafted Series Brush, and we have our Lancaster Brush Soaking Mug there. Of course, our Captain's Choice Bowl, which you've seen, and we're gonna finish things off today with what's left of the Declaration Bandwagon, and there's a lot of menthol on this, so every time I put this on, 
but I start watering. But man, I love this. And I thank Chris Garcia for sending me this uh, sample um, about a year ago or so. I, I did find a bottle, like I mentioned in my last video where I used this. I found a full bottle still left at uh, Small Flower, but they don't have it anymore. But this barbershop scent is fantastic. And I'm gonna finish the rest of that just in a moment. So I wanna thank you all for joining me. Until next time, I've been your host, CDB, reminding you, sure shave, do it your way, and as always, God bless.